Uh, 614, Michael Cohen, 1320 WILS. So we've got more news now on Robin Williams. Of course, he, he uh, well, we may or may not have our guests to talk about this, but he, uh, of course, committed suicide. Uh, Robin Williams, uh, what can you say? One of the greatest actors we've had. Uh, I don't think anyone has... Uh, has not been affected by at least one of his uh, great movies. But uh, what we're finding out now, his widow is revealing that he was in, in early stages of Parkinson's disease. Uh, to talk about how that may have played into the suicide itself and, and what exactly happens as you uh, go into this disorder, we're joined by Dr. Al Johnson. Uh, he heads the Johnson Medical Associates, johnsonmedicalassociates.com, where it's a team of professionals. They work with environmental medicine, allergies, and, and chronic illnesses. Uh, Dr. Johnson, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Parkinson's. Do you deal with Parkinson's then at your uh, clinic? I do. Okay. And uh, well, well, how, how do you describe Parkinson's and how do you deal with it? Well, Parkinson's is when a part of the brain, the dopamine production mechanism does not work right. And when you decrease that, then you get a variety of symptoms, including tremor, like most people are familiar with, the Parkinson's stare where they just kind of look like they're staring through you, Mm -hmm. looking straight ahead, lack of facial expressions, and then sometimes it involves lack of words or lack of uh, being able to get out what you are thinking. Wow, no, uh, and, certainly, certainly for a guy like Robin Williams, I can imagine that would affect him uh, dramatically. Does the Because I know he was known for um, having a, a bit of an addiction problem, cocaine and, and alcohol and so on. Is uh, Would that have possibly kind of triggered this d disorder? Those type of drugs do affect the brain. And it could be a combination of things, or it does add to Parkinson's or Parkinson's-like syndrome when those drugs cause brain damage mm -hmm. in, in some individuals. Okay, so when someone has a diagnosis part with Parkinson's, what is the treatment for that? Well, the treatment typically in standard medicine is medication to help increase the dopamine in your system. Standard Parkinson's medicine that helps you function better. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of short-acting, doesn't last uh, a real long period of time, and you have to dose it fairly frequently. And so it helps, but they don't regain really good function like they did before with it. It's not a complete fix, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and so it's, it's progressive, and what's the, what happens at the end? Uh, how does it uh, – it, it does eventually kill you, right? Right. Well, the body deteriorates, and you eventually get worse and worse. You know, there's different other outside the common treatment that, that you can do. Some of the patients, and we treat some with hyperbaric medicine, where you increase the oxygen saturation to the body by using the hyperbaric chamber, mm -hmm. and it helps the brain cells function better. And you do that along with nutrients that help the body make the appropriate hormone, and it works better. Nu uh, nutrients and, like vitamins, that kind of thing? Yeah, vitamins, minerals, amino acids that are precursors to the brain hormones. A Dr. Perlmetter out of Florida, a neurologist, is the one that really started and wrote a book about treating the chronic brain diseases uh, with hyperbaric chambers and using the nutrients. So, so, so does, the, go, does it slow down the process and the progress of Parkinson's, or can it stop it? Well, it can slow down, or I have some people that actually stabilize mm -hmm. uh, and have been pretty stable. Now, it hasn't reversed it, uh, so they're back to normal, but it has stabilized them and, and helped them. And if they read Dr. Perlmutter's book, you can Google him on the Internet or Google my website or check my website yeah. out, Hyperbaric Centers of Texas. It can tell you more about that. Hyperbaric chambers, that's where it's like an enclosure where you just have oxygen kind of pressurized on you? Right. It's a hard side chamber. It looks like Dr. Stone's chamber they use on their dive boat in case they have problems with the bends. Mm -hmm. And it's an enclosed hard-sided chamber where the person is under 100% oxygen. You breathe it in your lungs, and then it supersaturates the blood vessels. So you deliver five to seven times the amount of oxygen to all parts of your body. So, that sounds like it would be healthy all around. Have you ever sat in one of these? Oh, yeah. I do it all the time yeah. to keep myself healthy. And I have, you know, attorneys do it to keep their brains healthy. Works well for early dementia to help reverse early dementia before the cells become damaged from lack of blood flow mm -hmm. through those cells and in the you, brain. you feel better as soon as you uh, step out of this thing? You feel better. Now, it depends. Uh, some people that have slow body metabolism build up toxins, they may feel worse for the 
first couple of treatments. Mm-hmm. But then, yes, you feel better. You have more energy. You, you have better. Uh, your brain works better, quicker. And how, uh, how brain, often do you go, go into the hyperbaric chamber? Well, it depends on what you're treating. Well, what if you're uh, a healthy person like yourself? Yeah, if you're a healthy person, I do it three or four hours a month and in a row. And that, uh, and that kind of, and you can kind of stay in a healthy state by just doing it that just a couple a couple hours a month. Right, and you do it back to back because it works like exercise or, or physical therapy. So mm-hmm. you want to get those cells speeded up, and if you don't have any disease process going on, then it works fairly efficiently. If you have a disease process like a traumatic brain injury, say we're treating a veteran that had exposed a bomb a blast and damage your brain or somebody that's hit their head and had concussions, Mm -hmm. then you have to treat them in a series, say 40 hours in a series of treatments to help their brain cells recover. I mean, you can only wonder if Robin Williams was pursuing this treatment. I'm I'm guessing he had a good good doctor that's taking care of him. Do you think at this early stage of Parkinson's, do you think that may have played into the suicide itself? Well, it could because from what I've read is he knew it was a diagnosis, and he was depressed on top of that. And he knows other people that have Parkinson's and undoubtedly played a role in, in just his self-perception and and how he saw himself now and in the future. Right. Well, so certainly uh, some of what you've shared with us would uh, be quite hopeful for somebody facing uh, this disease. Dr. Al Johnson, an expert in Parkinson's and, and all kinds of chronic illnesses. Uh, his website, johnsonmedicalassociates.com, johnsonmedicalassociates.com. Dr. Johnson, thank you. Oh, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Have a good weekend. You also... Uh,